Hello everyone, this is Bob Martin, the RC sub guy with the NautilusDrydocks.com. We got a new product announcement for you. I'm excited to share it. Uh, it's gonna be something a little bit out of the ordinary. It is a French submarine. French, you say, a French submarine. Well, that's not very common, you know. Uh, it's not, but it is a very cool boat. Uh, a little bit of a history on this project. I was actually quasi-commissioned uh, from an individual out of France to design the 3D files for this submarine based on blueprints that he supplied to me. And uh, it turned out really, really well. Uh, of course, as I go, I'm getting a little bit better at creating nice, smooth files for creating these RC submarine hulls on your home 3D printer at a fraction of the cost of commercially available hulls. So Redoubtable here is going to join the ranks of uh, Astute, and the Hydra sub that is already for sale on my website. So this particular boat, as the files come to you unmodified, uh, is in 196 scale, and that uh, puts it at an overall length of right at around 53 inches uh, with a four and a half inch beam. What that basically means is it handles nicely a standard three inch diameter watertight cylinder. Weighing the upper hull, I've calculated that a ballast tank capacity of approximately 25 ounces, or if you want to talk about inches of a three inch ballast tank, 10 inch ballast tank is really what you're after to float the boat at the designed water line. Let us take a closer look at the boat as built. So this is the prototype uh, boat that I always put together to make sure that fitment works really well for everybody once they download the files. Um, the hull itself really did not undergo a ton of post-processing. Uh, I did some sanding uh, and a little bit of filling of some of the worst areas. But for the most part, this is just the bare plastic with paint on it. Uh, the way I designed it, we got a standard Z cut uh, in the hull. So the, uh, the entire nose of the boat is one piece. You've got a long longitudinal divide in the hull and then uh, it comes up on the rear section here and a single stainless steel bolt, uh, which it's all designed to accept uh, with the inside holder and I'll show that for you in a moment. Particular design has uh, fair water planes and this uh, particular boat has them installed and ready to go. All the linkages are in there. Got some 3D printed periscopes and I uh, supplemented these with some aluminum tubing. Just some, some standard aluminum tube you can get from your hobby store. Should make for a really nice visual presence uh, you know, on and under the water with those up to help keep track of it at periscope depth. Again, as I mentioned, just a kind of a rough and tumble paint job on here. Flat black, uh, I taped it off and did a little bit of misting with some green to get that waterline scum. And then just some pastels to give a, a little bit of uh, weathering to the hull. Make it look like an actual boat and not a pristine boat right out of dry dock. Files include all of the uh, drain holes that you can see there the demarcation between the deck and the hull, and some more uh, drain holes, just some nice details. This is a, uh, a you know, ballistic missile boat, so all of the missile hatches uh, are included on the top there. Um, some really neat detail on the back of the, the tower there, some hoses and connections and, and that kind of thing. The little doors are all inscribed in the 3D files, but the part of the boat that I really like the most is this really unique tail section. You can see these are like 
kind of, uh, of, of flying control surfaces so the, the dive planes and the rudders kind of stand apart from the stabilizers. And so there's this like little gap in between and I've never really seen that on another modern boat. Uh, I just think it's really unique. It looks really, really cool. Standard uh, on this boat is a, a seven bladed scimitar style propeller. Uh, this particular one is uh, 55 millimeters in diameter and uh, remarkably close to the authentic uh, propeller on the actual redoubtable submarine. Let me uh, crack into the boat and I will show you what the interior of it is designed and looks like. All right, I've removed that single stainless steel bolt from the back there. I'm going to try and do this one-handed. Lift that up. Comes right off. Uh, interior bulkheads, uh, of course, come and you're going to want to print out four sets. Come in uppers and lowers and they add stabilization to both the upper and the lower to ensure the proper spacing uh, between the two edges. Um, files are designed to accept a 3 16 diameter brass or, or stainless steel pin. Uh, all the holes are pre-done so that the top hull just fits right on top of there and it maintains alignment. Uh, we've got all the flood and drain passageways underneath. As this was the prototype, um, this particular one did not include the central and rear drain holes, but the front uh, is. So in the file that you're going to download, you'll see not only at the front, but in the middle and the back, you've got all of your drain holes pre-done in the hull as well. Here's the little lip on the front that catches the front of the boat, keeps that locked in place. We've got our rear bushing for our main drive motor there and then all of the linkages and you can see this uh, the prototype again I've done this all so that everything is all hooked up and ready to go just again as a proof of concept to make sure uh, that it was working properly and there was no interference at all with any of those control surfaces this is a 3 16 inch diameter stainless steel rod and what I'll do, I'll grab a flashlight and I'll show you how those linkages are installed. There we go, you can see those linkage arms uh, in place there, how they're set up. Basically just uh, linkage horns, and I offer that product for 16th inch uh, control shafts for all of the uh, output so that you don't have to do any of the heavy lifting there. That's in the components section of my website if you uh, decide to make it functional. One thing that I will note uh, for this, unlike some of the other builds that I did, I did not rely strictly upon cyanoacrylate glue to hold them together. What I actually did is utilize the soldering iron with a large chisel tip and I went over all of the seams and fused them together. So all of these pieces uh, are actually melted uh, together. It goes very, very quickly. PLA plastic is nice to work with. It melts at a nice low temperature and it smells wonderful when you melt it. All of these bulkheads go over the seams which lend uh, additional strength to all of them as well. So just to give you an idea of size, this is a standard uh, sub driver uh, with a small tank. I think this is an 8 inch tank. So it's not of sufficient size to drive this particular boat, but it gives you an idea about how this works. Uh, the cradles perfectly hold it in place and then uh, you simply have a, a drive shaft that would extend through connecting it in the back. Your linkages for your servo outputs would come out here and connect to the um, outputs for all of your control surfaces. So this cylinder would probably end up being about another four or five inches uh, longer and you want to place that ballast tank right in the uh, the middle of the boat. But again as you can see just gives you an idea about how it would sit in there and the proximate size of everything. So let's talk about some details of the printing process. I printed this uh, boat out. It comes in eight sections and so you're going to have uh, eight separate prints just for the hull 
add on your sail, add on your bulkheads, add on your control surfaces. Uh, you're going to have several hundred hours of print time on your printer once you're all done. And that will be heavily modified depending on the layer height that you select. I printed this model at 0.2 millimeter layer height with a 100% infill on all of the hull sections. The hull itself is 2.5 millimeters in thickness. Uh, which lends a lot of stability without adding a lot of bulk or weight. Um, I did not have to raft or brim any of the pieces. They sat uh, very well right on the um, print board for the printer. So uh, no need for the additional time or effort of putting those rafts or brims in place for everything except the uh, control surfaces obviously the rudders and dive planes. Something else to consider are the pros and cons of the 3D printing process itself. Having done uh, three of these particular models now, I will say that the big challenge is creating nice seamless joints between the sections of hull. Uh, you will typically end up with, uh, because of glue or just the 3D printing process, uh, a bit of a visible seam there. So you do need to sand those down smooth uh, and fill them for a perfectly smooth finish on your boat. Although I've seen some customers uh, simply print in raw plastic and it actually looks really, really cool, particularly if you do it in a cool filament like metallic silver, for example. And so just embrace the 3D printing aspect of it. Don't hide the fact it was printed in sections and you can still end up with a really cool boat. The other thing to keep in mind is the limitations of the PLA plastic itself. Now, 3D printers, especially the more inexpensive versions that you will find for hobby use, typically only print in one material, that being PLA plastic, which is uh, environmentally friendly, easy to use and fairly inexpensive. Unfortunately, PLA plastic, while it does produce a very nice surface finish, uh, is not the happiest in exceptionally prolonged submergence in water or uh, sitting in extreme temperature differentials. So um, the water aspect for our purposes is really not a problem because you don't leave your submarine sitting in your swimming pool for months and months on end. The temperature differential, however, is a problem because in a direct hot sunlight with a black hull, you're going to heat this up to the point that the plastic softens. So you do need to take extra precautions when you have a 3D printed hull uh, and you're going to be utilizing it outside. Just bear that in mind. Um, it's fine the way it is. You just need to take those precautions or what people have also done in the past is lay up a very thin layer of fiberglass over the outside and that does away with all of those issues. So 3D printing can be an awesome experience and a very inexpensive way to get into the hobby but just bear in mind that there are some limitations to the process that will make it not as desirable perhaps as forking out hundreds and hundreds if not thousands of dollars for a professional commercially made fiberglass hull. Well, there you go. The French Redoubtable RC Submarine available for download for your very own self to print out on your home 3D printer. It's a great way to get into the hobby at the very least it's a great hobby, uh, a great pastime, a great exercise in building a functional boat. I hope you enjoy. I'll put the link to the product in the link, the description of this video. If you're interested in buying it, by all means, go ahead and do so. You get not only the 3D files, but a bunch of reference photos and some instructions as well. I really hope that you enjoy it. Uh, if you do download it and you have some comments uh, or questions, by all means, email me anytime, bob at rc-sub.com. Thanks for joining me, everyone. Again, this is Bob Martin, the RC Sub Guy with the Nautilus Drydocks.com. Thanks for joining me. We'll catch you next time.